Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, and today I am checking out this beast, the Orange Super Crush 100. Let's see if it can hang with the big boys. So Orange have sent me this to try and they sent me the combo unit. Thanks Orange. I love combos. Hate combos. But that's that's not their fault. It's uh it's the same amp whether it's the head or it's the combo thankfully. Uh you can disconnect the speaker in the combo. So that's what I'm going to do. But what I'm actually going to do is take the head out of the combo. Luckily, the way they've designed it, that's really easy to do. It's just six screws. This whole thing should, there we go, lift out. But there we go, there is the same amp as you'll find in a head uh, casing, the Super Crush 100. There we go, I've plugged that amp now into my switching system. So it's got a tube screamer in front of it, which I'll turn off for a bit. Um, it's got a noise gate now in the effects loop. And it's going out into the live room into a Wharfdale uh, cab, which is kind of my secret weapon with kind of vintage 30s without the harshness with an SM57 on it. <laughs> Reverb sounds nice. It's not a spring style reverb, which I very much appreciate. Not a big fan of springs. It's more of a hall style reverb. But of course, that's not what you came here for. Let's get the chugs. That's more like it. I'm sat quite close to the amp, hence that. But That's nice. Uh, it's very thick, very chunky sound, and that's with the bass on full and the mid scoop back a bit, because the typical orange sound is not kind of scooped by default. It's very mid thick, and as you heard, the uh, the gain on middle didn't sound very appealing with these pickups. Kind of sounded a bit cheap, honestly. As soon as we turn up the gain, though. Also, not a lot of booming low end, which is probably quite useful in a mix because then in a mix, I can have this 
kind of sat really holding down the mid range while a different amp does the scoopy thing. So I could even take the high end down a bit here so it's not overly fizzy. It's definitely got a sound all its own. It's not a Marshall sound, it's not a Vox sound, it's not a Mesa sound, it's the orange sound. And the thing that really fascinates me about the Super Crush is it's got no valves in it. Not even a single preamp valve. It's all solid state, but they've gone uh, the extra mile to make it sound like the Rockerverb. And having played a Rockerverb, I can tell you that, yep, this is very much like the real deal Rockerverb. There we go, helps when you turn the effects loop on because the effects loop has a gate in it. So now I can have this at full volume. Very, very little. Let's see what happens if I back the gain off and turn on a really dirty boost. I'm going to use the Peppers pedals, Dirty Tree. Okay, that's too much. That's turning it into an outright clipping fuzz fest. Yep, <laughs> let's let's try that with the levels back down a bit because that, that's a 33 volt boost and it's very definitely by the sound of it not designed for that. Yeah, even with the level turned down on it, it's turning it into a clipping fuzz. Let's switch it out for a Tube Screamer. Something where I'm not going to boost the absolute life out of it. Okay, so my good old Tube Screamer 808 has its gain almost off the tone slightly below noon and the level slightly below noon too, so I don't blow the amp out. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't react as I would expect a valve amp to react. I think if you overload a preamp valve with something like one of these heavy boosts, it will take it better than the solid state input on this, which is reaching into voltage levels where it just kind of shuts down, which is as is expected in any circuit that isn't, you know, I mean, something like the 33 volt boost on the Dirty Tree and the 1433 is very much abuse of, of the amp. They are not designed to do that, but on certain amps that works really well. On this one, not so much, but I can definitely see something like a TC Spark or something with a cleaner boost uh, being something that if I turn this gain down, that might just do the thing. Ah, there we go. This this gain pot on this is really quite quite something. It does a lot. If I've got the gain now up at, at kind of uh, two o'clock, so number seven-ish, suddenly with the tube screen ring, that's come to life. <laughs> Just checking on the back that there isn't a level switch on the send and return because that might affect the noise gate, but there isn't, it's just one level. Uh, there are foot switch options on the back for the reverb and for the clean and dirty channels. And there is a DI out as well, which is going to give you a signal. Personally, I'd probably never use that, but the fact that it's there could be useful to you, I guess. With it being solid state, you could probably 
probably disconnect the speaker output and just use the DI without anything going pop. Uh, I know that's something I've used a lot on bass amps where they've got a solid state output, I can disconnect that. You should never do that on a valve amp, but on solid state you can usually get away with doing that. So that might be an option for you with the emulated speaker out, that might be something you want to do. But yeah, Super Crush, incredibly affordable compared to the actual rocker verb. And this is going to go on my amp rack here, and it's going to be one of my kind of what I call blending amps. I'm probably going to be using either the Marshall or the PV5150 as my main tone because they're both quite scooped, both quite aggressive, both quite detailed with a full low end, but often they're missing a lot of thickness in the mid range. And that's where either the Mesa Jill Rectifier is going to come in or this beastie. So thanks to the guys at Orange for sending this over because it is definitely going to get used. Thanks to all the patrons on Patreon for supporting me. You've been a massive help this whole time. And thank you everybody for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.